Welcome YouTubers to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In this video, I'm going to be working out practice problems for the arithmetic reasoning section of the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, that is the ASVAB. Before I do that, however, I just want to take a few minutes to talk about the ASVAB itself. Uh, first, I want to point out the ASVAB is a computer adaptive test for which you'll have 154 minutes to complete 145 questions. Uh, in addition to receiving a line score for each of its 10 subtests, you'll also receive what's called an AFQT score. Uh, AFQT, of course, stands for Armed Forces Qualification Test, and it's the score that says, yes, this person's qualified to join the military, or no, this person's not qualified to join the military. Um, the AFQT score is derived from your performance on the arithmetic reasoning subtest, the word knowledge subtest, the paragraph comprehension subtest, and the mathematics knowledge subtest. So my recommendation to anyone who's uh, preparing for this test is to devote a significant amount of your studying efforts to, do it, to preparing for these four sections. Um, in general, the higher you score in terms of your AFQT score, the more job opportunities that open up to you. Um, again, the AFQT can be viewed in two ways. You're given a percentile score as well as placed into a category. Uh, so exam for example, if you score a 50 uh, in terms of your AFQT score, that means you have scored better than 50% of all test takers, and that would place you in category 3A. Okay, so um, all that said, let's go ahead and get started with today's uh, guided practice. Okay, let me just maximize the page for you. Let me grab my pen now. Okay, great. All right, so uh, truthfully, to do well on the arithmetic reasoning section of the uh, ASVAB, you need to be comfortable doing addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, including with decimals and fractions. Okay, so uh, throughout this video, I'm going to make an effort to uh, describe each step that I'm taking. Uh, that way, if you're rusty with one of those things, you can probably uh, pick it up just by watching me and you won't necessarily have to go study a separate separate topic. Um, the way you should use this video, what's more, is like this. As soon as I read a question, you should pause the video. And after you pause the video, you should make an effort to work out the problem yourself. Um, once you uh, work out the problem yourself, Go ahead and play the video and see if you and I come up with the same answer. And you can also, at the same time, see if you and I took the same approach to get the answer. In many cases, I'm going to give you the quickest route to the answer. Uh, and I'm also going to talk about some tips that will help you work accurately and uh, intelligently uh, throughout this test. So all that said, let's go ahead and get started with number one. All right, question one. If pencils are bought at 70 cents per dozen and sold at 3 for 20 cents, the total profit on 6 dozen is. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply 70 cents by 6 dozen. Again, pencils are, we're told, 70 cents per dozen. And we're going to sell 6 dozen of them. Um, the way you multiply decimals is like this. You actually turn the decimal into a whole number by moving its decimal. So in this case, I'm going to make this 0.70 to 70 by moving the decimal two places. So if I were to rewrite this, this would be 70 times 6, which we all know how to do. Uh, 0 times 6 is 0. 7 times 6 is 42. Add our two decimal places that we move back in, 1 2, so this becomes uh, 420. In other words, it costs $4.20 to purchase the six dozen pencils originally. 
now we're told we're selling the six dozen pencils three for 20 cents. So first we need to figure out how many pencils there are total in six dozen. So we're going to take 12, multiply it by six. Two times six, of course, is 12. Carry the one. Uh, six times one is six, plus two is seven. So we know in six dozen pencils is the same as 72 pencils. Um, and we're selling them three for 20 cents. So I'm going to take 72 divided by three. Three goes into seven two times without going over. Of course, two times three is six. Uh, seven minus six is one. You want to bring down this two. Now the question is, how many times does three go into 12? That is four. Of course, three times four is 12. 12 minus 12 is zero. So we know there are 24 pencils, 24 sets of three pencils in six dozen. Now we're going to take 24 and multiply it by 20 cents. Again, like we did over here, we're going to turn this 0 0.20 into a whole number by moving it two decimal places. So this is going to become 24 times 20. Uh, 0 times 4, of course, is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. Bring down a 0 since we're starting this number. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 2 is 4. Let's add. Uh, 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 8 is 8. 0 plus 4 is 4. Bring back in our two decimals. 1, 2. So this is our cost to purchase the six dozen pencils. This is what we're selling them for. As you can see, there's a 60 cent difference between 480 and 420. And if you need me to, I can work that out to the side. Got 480. That's what we profit it minus our cost, 420. Uh, 0 minus 0 is 0. 8 minus 2 is 6. Bring down your decimal. 4 minus 4 is 0. Again, this is just 60 cents. Okay. Number two, a uh, certain type of siding for a house costs 1050 per square yard. Uh, what does it cost for the siding for a wall four yards wide and 60 feet long? Okay, so we're told the cost per square yard. Um, we want to know what it costs for a wall that's four yards wide by 60 feet long. Well, you can't do this problem as it stands because we have something in yards, we have something in yards, and we have something in feet. So before we push forward, we need to convert either yards to feet or feet to yards. In this case, we have yards here, yards here, and feet here. So I'm going to make this 60 feet. I'm going to convert it into yards. Of course, we should know there are three feet in every yard. So what I'm going to do uh, right out the gate is do 60 divided by 3. Uh, 60 divided by 3, of course, is 20. So instead of what is the cost for siding for a wall of uh, 4 yards by 60 feet, this is 4 yards by 20 yards. Okay, now we're trying to find the area of a rectangle that's 4 feet wide and 20 feet 20 yards long 4 yards wide 20 yards long sorry I, I said feet there um, to find the area of a rectangle we do length times width which is let me write that out for you before I do it length times width in this case that's uh, 20 times 4 or 80 Okay, now we take this 80 and multiply it by our cost per yard, and we'll come up with our answer. So this is going to be uh, 1050 times 80. And again, uh, since we're multiplying a decimal, I'm going to move this two decimal places. So it becomes 1050, and I'll add the two decimal places back at the end. Uh, 0 times 0 is 0, 0 times 5 is 0, 0 times 0 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, 
uh, bring down a zero since we're starting this number. Eight times zero is zero. Eight times five is 40. Carrier four. Eight times zero is zero plus four is four. Eight times one is eight. Add. Uh, zero plus zero is zero. And we can see this is going to be just eight, four. And I'm writing off to the side so I don't mess up the next problem. Eight, four, zero, zero, zero. Add our two decimals back in. One, two. And we can see that this is going to be $840. Okay. Again, the trick there was to convert feet to yards and then find the area accordingly and multiply that by the cost per yard, square yard. Uh, number three, a parcel delivery service charges $9.26 for their first four pounds of package weight, an additional $1.06 for each half pound over four pounds. What is the charge for a package weighing six and a half pounds? So we know right off the bat, the first four pounds of that six and a half pounds are going to cost $9.26. So I'll write four, $9.26. We know we're paying that. Uh, six minus four, of course, is two and a half. And the way I look at two and a half in light of the fact that we're told that it's a dollar oh six for each additional half pound, as I look at it like this, one half, one half, one half, one half, one half. Again, one half plus one half is one, so we know that's one. One half plus one half is one, so we know four one halves is two, plus one half is two and a half. We're told it's a dollar oh six per additional half pound. There's one, two, three, four, five additional half pounds. So we're going to take one oh six, multiply it by five, uh, and again move this decimal one, two. We'll add those back in at the end. Uh, five times six, of course, is thirty. Carry the three. Uh, five times zero is zero. Plus three is three. 5 times 1 is just 5. Uh, bring your two decimals back in so we can see this is 530. So now we do 926 times 530. Not times, plus 530. Sorry about that. To find the total cost to uh, deliver this package. 0 plus 6 is 6. 2 plus 3 is 5. Bring down your decimal. This decimal just stays lined up. Uh, 9 plus 5, of course, is 14. So we can see this is going to be 1456. Guys, occasionally I do misspeak in when I work out some of these problems. I'll say multiply when I'm really adding. If you see that, try to ignore it. Sometimes I uh, have other stuff that I'm trying to do at the same time. So just bear with me on that. Again, I am human. All right, number four, a typist uses uh, lengthwise a sheet of paper nine inches by 12 inches. She leaves a one inch margin on each side and a one and a half margin on top and bottom. What fraction part of the page is used for typing? So let me do a sketch. Okay, so we know this uh, paper is uh, 9 inches wide by 12 inches tall. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the area of this right away. This is going to be our denominator. And 9 times 12 is 108. Um, again, one thing I always encourage people to do is try to remember their times tables from 1 to 12. Uh, but in case you needed me to work this one out, I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, 2 times 9 is 18, carry the 1. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 1 is 10. Okay. And now let's add the stipulations uh, to this problem because we know the stipulations are going to be the numerator. Um, so we're told she leaves a 1 inch margin on each side. So that's right here. And a one and a half inch margin on top and bottom. So the space she's typing in really looks like this. 
So now we got to figure out the dimensions of this smaller space. Um, and again, this is uh, one inch on each side. So this is one inch. This is one inch. This is 1.5 inches top and bottom. So we can see that we're going to take nine and minus this inch over here and this inch over here. Nine minus one minus one or nine minus two is seven. So this smaller space, which I'm going to kind of write out separately, is seven. Again, nine minus this margin, nine minus this margin, nine minus two is seven. Uh, 1.5 plus 1.5 is three. So we see we're, lo we're losing three inches total on top and bottom. So this 12 is subtracted by three to become nine. Again, this is going to be our numerator of the fraction since it's going to be smaller. 9 times 7, of course, is 63. Now, we look for this as our answer choice. We don't see it. So, in that case, we have to reduce this. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite it off to the side here because reducing can get a little messy. And again, when you're reducing fractions, you're saying, what can go into the top and bottom of this fraction to make it smaller? I'm going to first divide top and bottom by 3. Um, 63 is easy. Six, uh, 3 goes into 6 two times. 3 goes into 3 one time. Uh, 108 is a little bit harder, so let's do the long division. Uh, 3 goes into 1, it doesn't. 3 goes into 10 three times without going over. Uh, three times three, of course, is nine. Subtract. Ten minus nine is one. Drop down this eight. Three goes into 18 six times. So this becomes 21 over 36. Is that an answer choice? It's not. Uh, I know three can go into 21 and 36. So again, I'm going to once again divide top and bottom by three. Three goes into 21 seven times. 3 goes into 36, well, 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 6 twice. 7 over 12, answer choice B. All right, number 5, uh, Carpenter needs 4 boards, each 2 feet 9 inches long. If wood is sold only by the foot, how many feet must he buy? Um, so what I like to do is convert everything from inches and feet to just inches. There are 12 inches in one foot. So 2 feet is 24 inches. 2 feet 9 inches is going to be 24 plus 9. Uh, 9 plus 4 is 13. Carry the 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. So that's the length of one board in terms of inches. To find the length of four boards, I'm going to take 33 multiplied by 4. 3 times 4, of course, is 12. Carry the 1. 3 times 4 is 12. Plus 1 is uh, 13. Um, now the question is, how many feet of boards does he need to buy? Of board does he need to buy to for this length of four boards? So we're going to take 132 divided by 12. Now, if you memorized your times tables, you would know that 12 times 11 is 132 and you would be done. Again, that's a little tip that would help you finish this problem more quickly. But if you didn't know that, let's go ahead and work it out by hand. Uh, 12 goes into 13 one time without going over. Of course, uh, 13 minus 12 is 1. Drop down this 2. 12 goes into 12 once. 12 times 1 is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. And there we got your, our answer. Exactly 11 feet of boards he would need to buy for all for these four boards. Okay. Number six, an employee has two-ninths of his salary withheld for income tax. The percent of his salary that is withheld is most nearly, so we need to approximate this. Whenever I see fractions, I think of them as two different, two different ways. I read this as 2 over 9, and at the same time, I read it as 2 divided by 9. 
So in other words, I can turn 2 divided by 9 into this. 2 divided by 9. That is long division. And this will get me a percent. So 9 goes into 2. It doesn't. I have to add a 0 here. When I add a 0, I have to bring up a decimal. 9 goes into 20 two times. 9 times 2, of course, is 18. Let's take a look. I know this is going to be 20 something percent, so I can cross out these automatically. Um, 20 minus 18 is 2. Again, 9 doesn't go into 2, so I have to add a 0. A 9 goes into 20 two times. 2 times 9 is 18. Okay. Uh, again, 20 minus 18 is 2. I have to bring down a 0 since 9 doesn't go into 20. 9 goes into 20 two times. So we can see that this is going to repeat as 22222. Two, two, two. In other words, this is going to be about 22%. Uh, number seven, on a blueprint in which two inches represents five feet, the length of a room measures seven and a half inches, the actual length of the room is. Okay, so if two inches equals five feet, I always want to know what the unit rate is. That is, I want to know what one inch represents. One inch is half of two inches, half of 5 feet, therefore, is 2.5 feet. Okay, and since I have to deal with this half inch right here, I also want to know what half an inch represents. And a half of 1.5, or 2.5 is, again, 2.5 divided by 2. Um, 2 goes into 2 one time. Uh, 2 times 1 is 2, subtract. Uh, 2 minus 2 is 0, so we drop down this 5. Again, we're just going to bring our decimal right up. Uh, 2 goes into 5 twice without going over. Uh, 2 times 2, of course, is 4. Subtract. 5 minus 4 is 1. Bring down a 0 since 2 doesn't go into 1. Uh, 2 goes into 10 five times. So I know half of inch represents 1.25 feet. Now, using these conversions that I did before I started the problem, I can actually work this out much quicker. I know I'm going to have 7 inches, so I'm going to do 7 times 2.5 and 1, it, one half inch. So I'm just going to add this to this result. So I'm going to do 2.5 times 7. Again, move this decimal place 1 to make that 25. We'll add it back in at the end. 5 times 7 is 35, carry the 3. Uh, 7 times 2 is 14, plus 3 is 17. So we're going to add our one decimal back in. So that's 17.5 feet. Let's add the 1.25 feet. So this is going to be 17.5 plus 1.25. Imaginary 0 there. Uh, 0 plus 5 is 5, 5 plus 2 is 7, 1 plus 7 is 8. Again, just drop down your decimal in order. Uh, 0 plus 1 is 1. 18.75 is right here. Again, 3 fourths is the same as 0.75. Uh, just a rule of thumb, 1 third equals 0 0.3333, 1 half equals 0 0.5, uh, 3 fourths equals 0.75, uh, one fourth equals 0.25, two thirds equals 0.66666. You need to know these common fractions because when you get something like this, you need to be able to go from decimal to fraction real quickly, which I just did. Otherwise, you might get this problem wrong. You might think you have made a mistake and then come up with a goofy way to try to answer this. Okay, number eight. During a 25% off sale, an article sells for uh, $375. What was the original price of this article? So we know uh, 0.75 of some unknown original price equals 375 
So using a little bit of algebra, we can solve this. Again, both, divide both sides by 0.75. So we know the original cost of the article is going to be x equals 375 divided by 0 0.75. Um, this can be somewhat of a challenging problem, but again, using the fact that I just mentioned here, let's turn 0 0.75 into a fraction. So I'm going to rewrite this as this. 375 divided by 3 fourths. When you divide fractions, you follow the keep, change, flip rule. That is, you keep 375. You change it from division to multiplication. And then you flip this fraction. So this becomes 4 over 3. Uh, to turn a whole number into a fraction, you put it over 1. So again, keep, change, flip. Keep this number the same, which I did. Change from division to multiplication, which I did. Flip this fraction from 3 fourths to 4 over 3. And then multiply. Now, before I multiply, I'm going to make an effort to reduce this problem. Uh, 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 375, let's see. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 75 25 times. Now we just multiply straight across, and this becomes 4 times 125 over 1. Anything over 1 is itself, so this problem just becomes 4, over 120, 4 times 125. Let's go ahead and work that out. 5 times 4 is 20, carry the 2. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10. Carry the 1. 4 times 1 is 1, plus 1 is 5. So we know the original cost of the article, I imagine its article of clothing, is $500. Okay, um, number 9. The total length of fencing needed to enclose a rectangular area 46 feet by 34 feet is? We can see we're given everything in feet but the answers are in yards. So uh, in this case, we're going to have to make a conversion. But first, let's sketch it out. Total, it's a rectangle that is 46 by 34 feet. And we want to know the total length of fencing to enclose this rectangle. Again, uh, if I was interested in covering the face of the rectangle, I'd be using area. Since I want to know the, f the distance of, or the, the length of fencing, I'm going to use perimeter. And perimeter of a rectangle or anything is to add up all the sides. So I'm going to do 46 plus 46 plus 34 plus 34. Add that up. 6 plus 4 is 10. 6 plus 4 is 10, so I know this is going to be 20. Carry the 2. 4 plus 3 is 7. 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 plus 7 is 14. Plus 2 is 16. So I know the perimeter of fencing I need in terms of feet is 160. Um, that said, I have to divide 60 divided by, by 3 to get my yardage. Again, there are three feet in every one yard. So we'll do 160 divided by three to get our yardage. Uh, three doesn't go into one. Three goes into 16 five times. Uh, three times five, of course, is 15. Uh, 16 minus 15 is one. Drop down this zero. Um, three goes into 10 three times um, and right away we know what our answer is going to be it's not going to be 26 it's not going to be 52 it's going to be 53 and a third but let's confirm that uh, 3 times 3 is 9 uh, nine, 10 minus 9 is 1 uh, bring down a 0 to start a new uh, to start a new uh, to make it divisible 
Uh, three goes into ten. Uh, let's see. Oh, we would actually be done since we're working with fractions. This ten minus nine would be one, which would be your remainder that you would put over the divisor. So this would be fifty-three and one third. Again, this would be our remainder. We put that over the divisor, so this becomes fifty-three and one third. And again, let me give you another example of that because that was a little unclear. Let's say we had 13 divided by 4, and I wanted you to convert this to a mixed fraction, a mixed number like this. You would say 4, four goes into 13 uh, 3 times. 4 times 3 is 12. Subtract. Uh, 13 minus 12 is 1. So you would take this remainder of 1, put it over 4 to make this a fraction of a mixed number of 3 and 1 fourth. Again, here's our 3 that we got using long division. We had a remainder of 1. We put that over the divisor to get a mixed number of 3 and 1 fourth. That's all you do when you're converting uh, long, long division to mixed numbers. And I actually have a video of this under... Uh, mastering fractions for the test of adult basic education that is the tape test if you struggle with fractions go ahead and watch that video it should help clear everything up in terms of fractions all right number 10 a piece of wood 35 feet 6 inches long was used to make four shelves of equal length Number 10, a piece of wood 35 feet 6 inches long was used to make four shelves of equal length. The length of each shelf was. So again, we're dealing with feet. Let me grab my pen. Uh, feet and inches. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, to keep everything simple, so I'm going to convert everything to inches like I did in the previous problem. So I'm going to do 35 times 12. Again, there are 12 inches in a foot. So 5 times 2 is 10. Carry the 1. Uh, 3 times 2 is 6. Plus 1 is 7. Add a 0 since we're starting this number. 1 times 5 is 5. Uh, 3 times 1 is 3. Add 0 plus 0 is 0. 7 plus 5 is 12. Carry the 1. So we know there are 420 inches and 35 feet. Let's add our 6 inches to that. So we know there are 426 inches and 35 feet and 6 inches. Those are equivalent. We know there are 4 shelves. So I'm going to take this 426 divided by 4. Uh, 4 goes into 4 one time. 4 times 1, of course, is 4. Subtract. 4 minus 4 is uh, 0. Um so we drop down this 2 and 6. A 4 doesn't go into 2, so we have to add a 0 here. 4 goes into 26 6 times. Uh, 4 times 6, of course, is 24. Um, 26 minus 24 is 2. 4 doesn't go into 2, so I have to add a 0. When I add a 0 this time, however, I have to add a decimal here. Um, 4 goes into 25 times. 5 times 4, of course, is 20, so there's no remainder on this one. So we know each shelf is going to be 106.5 inches. Now we got to convert this inches to feet. So we're going to do 106.5 divided by 12. In a previous problem, uh, I did 12 times 9, which was 108. So we know that's too big, so we know this is going to be 8 something. Again, uh, this is not going to work, this isn't going to work, and this isn't going to work. Uh, so 12 times 8, let me show you what that is. Uh, 2 times 8 is 16. Carry the 1. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So 12 times 8 is 96. Subtract. Again, just bring the decimal right there. Uh, 96 minus 106 is 10. And of course we have the 0.5 there. So this is going to be 8 feet and 10 and a half inches.
which is right here. Again, you got to be able to see that. Eight feet, ten and a half inches. All right, number 11. A team won two games and lost ten. So they let's write this out. Win, win, loss, 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 loss. Uh, the fractions of its games one is correctly expressed as well they won two out of how many games did they play in one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so they won two out of twelve games uh, we reduced this by a factor of two which becomes one over six right there Alright, number 12, what is the simple interest on $600 at 8% for two years? So you need to know the formula for simple interest. To do this problem, that's going to be I equals PRT. Uh, this might be worth committing to memory. Um, you might see this on the ASVAB. I don't remember if I did. And this says interest or simple interest equals principal, the amount you invest times the rate you're getting on your on your investment times the time of your investment. So let's fill this in. Again, simple interest equals your principal, in this case that's 600, times your rate, 0 0.08, times time, which is two years. Okay, we just plugged all those points into this equation. Um, to make this easy, I'm going to rewrite this as I equals 600 times 0 0.08 times 2 is 0.16 so now I just need to work out this to find my answer so I'm going to do 600 times 0.16 again we're multiplying by decimals I'm going to move this one two times and we'll add those back in at the end uh, 6 times 0 is 0 6 times 0 is 0 6 times 6 is 36. Bring down a 0 since we're starting this number. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. 6 times 1 is 6. Let's add. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. 6 plus 0 is 6. 3 plus 6 is 9. Add our two decimals back in. 1, 2. We know this, of course, is going to be $96. Dollars. All right, 13, a change purse contained three half dollars, uh, four quarters, seven dimes, six nickels, and nine pennies. Express in dollars and cents the total amount of money in the purse. Again, three half dollars. Half dollars, 50 cents. So I know this is going to be a dollar 50. Eight quarters, there are four quarters in a dollar. There are four, there are two dollars in eight quarters. Uh, seven dimes is 70 cents. Uh, six times five is 30 cents for the nickels and nine pennies is 0.09 so let's go ahead and add this all up and I don't think people carry half dollars anymore but that's irrelevant all right let's add all this up 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 9 is 9 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 5 is 15. Bring down the decimal, add the, carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So in the purse, there's $4.59, which is right there. 14. Um, how much does a salesperson earn for selling $68 worth of writing paper if she is paid a commission of 40%? So that question is, what is 68 times 0.4? Again, to make this problem easy, I'm going to make this a whole number by moving it one decimal place. So this becomes 68 times 4. 8 times 4 is 32. Carry the 3. Uh, 6 times 4 is 24. Plus 3 is 27. Uh, bring back in our one decimal place that we took away. So this becomes $27.20.
which is right here. Uh, number 15, if a certain job can be performed by 18 clerks in 26 days, the number of clerks needed to perform the job in 12 days is, again, 18 clerks take 26 days, so it would take one clerk Twenty-six times eighteen days to do the job by themselves. Uh, eight times six is forty-eight. Carry the four. Uh, two times eight is sixteen. Plus four is twenty. Bring down a zero since we're starting this new number here. Uh, one times six is six. One times two is two. Let's add. Uh, zero plus eight is eight. 0 plus 6 is 6, 2 plus 2 is 4. So it would take one clerk 468 days to do this job. Um, how long will it take, how many clerks will it take them to do the job in 12 days? So we're going to do 468 divided by 12. Uh, again, 12 times 4 is 48. 12 times 3 is 36, so we know this is going to be 3. Uh, 12 times 3 is 36. Subtract. So right away we can eliminate 52 and 24. We know the answer is going to start with a 3. Um, 36, 46 minus 36 is 10. Drop down this 8. Uh, 12 goes into 108 as uh, we saw earlier 9 times. 9 times 12 is 108 so there's no remainder. So the answer to this question is 39. Uh, this is a fairly difficult question, to be honest with you. All right, number 16. A carton contains nine dozen file folders. If a clerk removes 53 folders, how many folders are left in the carton? So nine dozen, 12 times nine. We saw that was 108 in the previous problem. I'm not going to work that out. They take away 53 from 108. Uh, 8 minus 3 is 5 and you can do this you can do uh, you can make this 0 and borrow the 1 to make that 10 to make this uh, 5 or you can regard this as 10 minus 5 which is 5 so we know there are 55 files left in the carton uh, number uh, number 17 a man had $25 he saw some ties that cost $4.95 a piece how many of these ties could he buy with his $25 um, so in other words uh, he has almost $5 so we know that 5 times 5 is 25 he has they caught the ties cost less than 5 so we know he's going to be able to purchase at least 5 ties um, we know three is not a choice because if he had $5, if the, if the ties were $5 per tie, he could still buy them. And again, we're assuming there's no tax. Now let's just see. If those ties, if he bought six ties um, for $4.95 a piece, would he have enough money? So let's see if that's going to work. If not, we know the answer is just going to be five. So let's do $4.95 times six. Again, at this point, I'm going to stop moving the decimal place. I'm just going to pretend it's not there. And I'm going to say we moved it one, two times. And we'll add those back in at the end. Uh, five times six, of course, is 30. Carry the three. Nine times six is 45. Plus three is 48. Carry the four. Uh, six times four is 24. Plus four is 28. Add in our two decimal places. So we can see that six ties cost $28. He only has 25, so we know he can only buy five ties. Okay, number 18. A man earns uh, $20.56 on Monday, $32.90 on Tuesday, and $20.78 on Wednesday. He spends half of all of he earns during the three weeks. How much money does he have left? So we're going to add all those up and divide by two. 
Again, decimal is going to stay in the same place. 8 plus 0 plus 6 is 14. Carry the 1. Uh, 5 plus uh, 5 plus 7 is 16. Plus 1 is 17. Plus 5 is 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Carry the 2. Uh, 2 plus 2 is 4. And 3 plus 2 is 5. Plus 2 is 7. So over the course of the three days, he earns 74 24. Let's go ahead and divide that by 2 to find out what half is. Um, seven, 2 goes into 7 3 times without going over. 2 times 3, of course, is 6. So right away, we know our answer is going to be 3 something. Start with a 3. Uh, 7 minus 6 is 1. Bring down this 4, bring down this 2, bring down this 4. Uh, 2 goes into 14 7 times. Uh, 2 times 7 is 14. Subtract. Uh, 14 minus 14 is 0. So bring down this 2, bring down this 4. Again, keep your decimal in the same spot. Uh, 2 goes into 24 12 times. So we can see that this is going to be 3712. All right, number 19. How many packages of candy containing three quarters of a pound each can be filled from a 15 uh, pounds of candy? So again, this problem becomes 15 divided by three fourths, or you can rewrite all whole numbers as 15 over one. Just put them over one. So this problem becomes 15 over 1 divided by 3 over 4. Um, again, we talked about this earlier. Keep, change, flip. Keep this first fraction the same. 15 over 1. Change this from division to multiplication. And then flip this fraction to be 4 over 3 instead of 3 over 4. Before I work this out, I'm going to cross multiply or reduce. Three goes into three one time. Three goes into uh, fifteen five times. Um, we can see that this is now we just multiply straight across. We can see this is going to be five times four over one times one. Uh, five times four is twenty over one. Anything divided by one is itself, so we know this is just going to be twenty. All right, number 20. A champion runner ran the 100-yard dash in three track meets. The first time he ran it in 10.2 seconds, the second time in 10.4 seconds, and the third in 10 seconds. What is the average of his time? To find the average, you add all the numbers together and divide by how many there are. There are one, two, three numbers in this case. So we're going to do 10.2 plus... 10.4 plus 10 and divide that by 3. That's going to give us our average. Um, we can do this one. We can do part of this one in our head. Uh, 10 plus 10 plus 10 is going to be 30. Uh, 0.2 plus 0.4 is going to be 0.6. So this becomes 30.6 over 30. We can do this math in our head too. Uh, 3 goes into 30 10 times. Keep your decimal there. 3 goes into 6 twice. So we know the average is 10.2. You could have worked this out doing long division. And let me show you what that looks like just in case you're not comfortable doing mental math. Uh, 30.6 divided by 3. Again, keep the decimal right here. Bring it up here right now. Uh, 3 goes into 3, well, 3 goes into 30 10 times. Uh, 10 times 3 is 30. Subtract. 30 minus 30 is 0. Bring down this 6. 3 goes into 6 twice. Okay? All 
Um, a crate containing a tool weighs uh, 12 pounds. If the tool weighs 9 pounds, 9 ounces, how much does the crate weigh? Okay, so we know the tools weigh 9 pounds and 9 ounces. And we know we're dealing with 12 pounds total. Um, there are 16 ounces in one pound. So I'm going to rewrite this 12 pounds in terms of a fraction. And that's going to be, and this should be 9 pounds, 9 ounces. I wrote a 1 there, sorry about that. Um, I'm going to rewrite this 12 pounds as 11 pounds and 16 over 16. Again, there are 16 ounces in a pound. So this 16 over 16 is one pound. 11 plus one is 12. And I'm gonna do the same here for this nine. This is nine and nine over 16 ounces. Now we can just subtract. Um, since these are mixed numbers with the same denominator in their fractions, nine minus 11, nine, 10, 11, that's two. And we're subtracting those. 16 minus 9 is 7. So this is 2 pounds and 7 ounces, which is right there. All right, number 22. Uh, the area of a room measuring 12 by 15 feet is. 9 square yards, 12 square yards, 15 square yards, 20 square yards. Again, we're going from feet to yards, so we got to make a conversion at some point. Um, again, there are 3 feet in every yard. So, uh, since these numbers are both divisible by 3, I'm going to div I'm going to divide them right off the bat. 12 feet is the same as 12 divided by 3 or 4 yards 15 is the same as 15 divided by 3 or 5 yards now this problem is the area of a room that's 5 by 4 yards not feet and the area is length times width so 5 times 4 are just 20 square yards okay All right, number 23, a woman purchased a blouse for $10.98. She returned the blouse the next day and selected a better one costing $12.50. She gave the clerk a $5 bill to pay for the difference in price. How much change should she receive? Hmm, okay. So uh, first we need to find the difference in price between these two. So I'm going to do $12.50 minus $10. 98 because again she already paid 1098 um, so she has a credit of 1098 uh, so we need to find how much she should get back minus her credit uh, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna borrow from this 5 I'm gonna make this a 4 I'm gonna make this a 10 uh, 10 minus 8 is 2 uh, now I can't do 4 minus 9 so I'm gonna have to borrow a one there and add one there. Uh, 14 minus 9 is 5. Again, your decimal just stays lined up. Uh, 1 minus 0 is 1. So we know there was a dollar 52 difference between these two prices. Uh, so she gave the clerk a $5 bill. So we're going to do 5 minus 152 to get our answer for her change because again this is basically saying uh, she had to pay an additional dollar fifty two to buy the uh, 1250 shirt and she gave her a five dollar bill so we're taking five minus 152 to find what her change is going to be um, again zero minus two we can't do zero minus five we can't do so we have to make this a four and this becomes a ten now I can do this one, but I still can't do this one. So I'm going to borrow one more time. This is going to become a 9. That's going to become a 10. 10 minus 2 is 8. 9 minus 5 is 4. 
drop down the decimal as it stands. 4 minus 1 is 3. So we can see we should give her back 348. Assuming I didn't make a mistake. Alright, number 24. Uh, the daily almanac report for one day during the summer stated that the sun rose at 614 a.m. and set at 606 p.m. Find the number of hours and minutes and the time between the rising and setting of the sun during that day. Uh, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Uh, there's a reason that military time exists, and it's for this reason. Finding the, the length between two, two different times is much easier when we convert p.m. To, to out of a 24-hour 24 uh, 24 time clock. So to do that, I'm going to do 6 uh, plus 12, which is going to be 18. So in military time, 606 is represented as 1806, which makes this math a lot easier. Again, this is going to be 614 or 0614 if you're being more specific. We want to find the, di the difference between those. Okay, so um, again, we can't take away 6 minutes from 14 minutes, so I'm going to make this a 17 and add a 60 here so this is going to become 66 uh, 4 minus 6 is 2 6 minus 1 is uh, 5 17 minus 6 is going to be uh, let's see 11 so in, out, in other words there's an 11 hour should be an H and 52 minute uh, there's 11 hours and 52 minutes between these two points in time. All right, number 25. In a 45-minute gym class, 30 boys want to play basketball. Only 10 can play at once. If each player is given the same length of time to play, how many minutes should each play? Um, so we got 30 boys. We're doing 10 uh, groups of 10. So we know they're going to go in three groups. And to give them even time, we're going to take 45 divided by 3. Uh, 3 goes into 4 watts. 3 times 1 is 3. Subtract. 4 minus 3 is 1. Bring down this 5. Uh, 3 goes into 15 five times. Uh, 3 times 5 is 15. 15 minus 15 is 0. So we can see they're each group's going to get 15 minutes of playtime. All right, 26. Uh, the library charges five cents for the first day and two cents for each additional day uh, that a book is overdue. If a borrower paid 65 cents in late charges, for how many days was the book overdue? Uh, so right away we're going to subtract 5 because the first day it's late you pay 5 cents. So 65 minus 5 is going to be 60. So this is one day late. You still owe 60 cents. So we're going to do 60 divided by 2. Uh, that of course is 30. So we know the book was 30 plus one day's late. That is 31 days late. Pretty quick and easy problem. Alright, uh, 27. How many slices of bread, each weighing 2 ounces, are needed to balance 2 pounds of apples? So in other words, how many slices of bread weighing 2 ounces is equivalent to 2 pounds? Um, again, there are 16 ounces in 1 pound. Um, so 2 pounds is going to be 32 ounces. So we're going to take 32 Divided by 2, since we know each slice of bread weighs 2 ounces. Uh, 2 goes into 3 one time. 2 times 1 is uh, 2. Subtract. Uh, 3 minus 2 is going to be 1. Bring down this 2. Uh, 2 goes into 12 six times. So we can see we're going to need 16 slices of bread uh, to balance out the 2 pounds of apples. Alright, number 28. 
if uh, one half cup of spinach contains 80 calories and the same amount of peas contains uh, 300 calories, how many cups of spinach have the same caloric content as a two-third cup of peas? So I know a half a cup of peas, and let me grab my pen again, a half a cup of peas has 300 calories. If I double that, I know one cup of peas will have 600 calories. Okay, we're interested in finding out first how many calories there are in two-thirds uh, cups of peas. And that information is not given to us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure that out this way. Um, again, uh, when we're dealing with fractions, we can really make this denominator whatever we want. So I can go... Uh, 1 twelfth, 2 twelfths, 3 twelfths, 4 twelfths, 5 twelfths, 6 twelfths, 7 twelfths. I don't know why I wrote 18. Let me rewrite that. 7 twelfths, 8 twelfths, 9 twelfths, 10 twelfths, 11 twelfths, and 12 twelfths. 12 out of 12 is one cup, 6 out of 12 is half a cup, right? So if I want to find out how many calories are in increments of 12 of a cup, I can do that. And I would take this 600 divided by 12. Uh, 60 divided by 12 is going to be um, 12 times 5 is going to be 0... 5 times 2 is 0, plus 1 is, uh, 5 times 1 is, let me start over. 2 times 5 is 0, carry the 1. Five, 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 1 times 5 is uh, 5, plus 1 is 6. So 12 times 5 is 60. 12 times 50 would be 600. So I know this goes up by increments of 50 calories each. Okay, You'll see why I'm doing that in just a second. So what is 2 thirds? Well, I know 2 thirds is the same as 8 over 12. Again, if I were to reduce this 8 over 12 by a factor of 4, that is, I were to divide top and bottom by 4, 8 divided by 4 would be 2, 12 divided by 4 would be 3. This would be equivalent to 2 thirds. So if there are 50 calories in each twelfth of a cup, I know 50 times 8 will give me the amount of calories in two-thirds of a cup of peas. 0 times 8 is 0. 5 times 8 is 40. So right here, there are 400 calories. Okay? What's more, I know there are 80 calories per half cup of spinach. So I'm going to take that 400, divide it by 80. And to keep this math simple, I'm going to kick off these zeros. Again, 8 goes into 40 five times. And again, that's basically saying there are five half cups of spinach in 400 calories. So I need to take 5 and multiply it by 1 half which becomes 5 over 2. Uh, this is a uh, improper fraction, so I'm going to convert it to a mixed number by doing 5 divided by 2. Uh, 2 goes into 5 uh, 2 times. 2 times 2 is 4. 5 minus 4 is 1, so this is my remainder. Again, we talked earlier about making uh, fractions into mixed numbers. Uh, so this is going to be 2, this 2, and 1 half cups, which is right here. So again, I used this little trick to find out how many calories there were in 2 third cups of peas. And then I found out how many half cups were in that amount. And then I converted a improper fraction into a mixed number to get our answer. Difficult problem. If you see this on uh, the ASVAB, you're probably doing pretty well.
All right, number 29. If it takes 30 minutes to type six pages, how many hours will it take to type 126 pages at the same rate? So I'm big on finding the unit rate. If it takes 30 minutes to type six pages, let's do uh, six divided by 30 to find out how many pages you type per minute. Again, I'm gonna, 30 doesn't go into six, so I have to add a zero. When I do that, I have to bring up a decimal. Uh, 30 goes into 60 twice. So in other words, every minute you're typing 0.2 of a page, okay? Um, so how many, t how much, how many hours will it take you to type 126 pages? It's going to be 126 divided by 0.2. Again, as I mentioned earlier, you can't uh, divide with the decimal on the outside, so you have to add this. You have to move it over one. When you move it over one there, you have to you have to move it over one here. In which case, you have to add a zero. Okay. So uh, 2 goes into 12, 6 times, 6 times 2 is 12, subtract, 12 minus 12 is 0, uh, drop down this 6, drop down this 0, uh, uh, 2 goes into 60, um, 30 times. So this basically, and uh, 30 times 2 is 60, subtract, there's no remainder. So this says it will take you 630 minutes to type 126 pages at this rate. Well, of course, these answers are given in hours. There are 60 minutes in an hour. So we're going to take 630 divided by 60. Um, and we can see that it's going to be close to 10. Again, you can look at this as 6, 60 goes into 63. Our 60 goes into 630. 60 times 10 would give you 600. So I'm going to do that first. 60 times 10 is 600. Subtract, we're left with 30. Again, this is our remainder. So we can put this over that. And this becomes 10 and 30 over 60 minutes. 10 hours and 30 over 60 minutes, which is 10.5 hours. And 30 over 60 is a half an hour, which is right there. All right, final question. A night watchman must check a certain storage area every 45 minutes. If he first checks, if he first checks the area as he begins a nine-hour tour of duty, how many uh, times will he have checked the storage area? So first, we need to figure out how long his duty is going to be. We can make up a time if we want. Um, so I'm going to say he's going to start at 12 a.m., in which case he's going to finish his shift at 12 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 9. He's going to finish at 9 a.m. That's a nine-hour shift. So the way I like to do these problems when they're simple is... He checks it once at 12 o'clock, checks it again at 12.45, checks it again at 1.30, checks it again at 2.15, checks it again at uh, 3 o'clock, checks it again at 3.45. I'm just adding 45 to each of these numbers, checks it again at 4 uh, 30, checks it again at 5.15, checks it again at 6, checks it again at 6.45, checks it again at 7.15, or 7.30, sorry about that, checks it again at 8.15, and checks it a final time at 9 o'clock. Let's add those up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So in total, he checks it 13 times. Again, each time I just added uh, 45 and just counted them up. So um, that's all I have for you uh, in this video. 
Uh, if you found it helpful, of course, feel free to uh, give it a thumbs up or leave some positive feedback in the comments section below. Um, as you can tell, for some of the problems, uh, they're pretty strenuous for me. Um, as a rule of thumb, I like to say that you should try to do at least 10 practice tests before you take the actual ASVAB. In doing that, you're going to build up your endurance and you're also going to see a wide variety of different types of questions, which of course will help you boost your score. Um, so all that said, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut you loose. Konnichiwa.